Hi everybody, hey it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas again with Cascade the Wonder Dog and Cascade's got a little prodigy here, I'm going to introduce her to you for the first time. She is probably going to take his place when he uh, becomes too old and that is uh, Sarah and we haven't figured out anything to call Sarah yet so let's figure out together what we want to call Sarah but this is um, eventually his replacement. Anyhow, that's not the purpose of the video today, but it's a brilliant, brilliant fall day out here. We're in the greenhouse. Unfortunately, it might be a brilliant fall day, but it's going to be in the 90s again. I don't know whether this is another anomalous year for weather or whether it is the beginning of the upswing. That was predicted about Oh, about 20 years ago, that within about 20, 30 years, the upswing would start. Well, the problem is, the planet doesn't read those studies, so she's going to do what she wants to do. But today, we're going to do part one of probably, I'm not sure how many parts, but part one of the new cistern build. Now, this is going to take probably a month to do, and it's going to depend on how soon I can afford the liner. I'm going to... Well, I may have to get behind the camera to show you all of it, but let me start out here. We're building a cistern. Now, the reason I'm building a cistern here is we need more water. That I've said that many times. We have, and I believe you can see it, we have this one 3,000-gallon water tank here inside the greenhouse. It's inside the greenhouse because all along I had planned on using the water or the temperature in the mass of the water to moderate the temperature inside the greenhouse. So the plan was to put two more of these tanks here. Well, the tanks are $1,500 plus dollars each, that's $3,000, or I can spend about $450 on, or $500 on material and build a much bigger cistern. I've got the skills, I know how to engineer it, it's just a matter of doing it. So we're gonna go ahead and do it, and this is the start. The footing became an issue when I had my uh, well, my last helper out here who um, wanted to do a footing the way he'd been taught to do footings, you know, get out the string line, do this, do that, do this, do that, do all that stuff. And in fact, when I started, when I kept saying, no, look, you got to do it the way I do it, it's much simpler. It's, well, I'm not signing my name to that. Well, I didn't ask anybody to sign their name to anything. I want it done my way. It's my house after all. So let me show you the way I've been doing all my footings, most of my footings, around here. Now building with bottles is very, very forgiving. You don't have to be completely linear. You don't have to use a string. We're going to have to fill in that tank, which has always been the plan. We have to move those two pieces of plumbing, which is not a big deal. All of it is not a lot of work, but it is work. But the footing that I was talking about Tip it, simply to do a footing when you're setting bottles like this, because it's not brick, it's not, um, it's not block, so you don't have to be completely square and linear. You simply dig a trench. This particular trench is six inches all the way along the bottom. Um, you dig it all the way to that wall there, finish that wall out, but we're going to dig it to that wall and then pour it with concrete. Now the difference there's a couple of projects here at the Eco Ranch that are exciting and that I'm really interested in, in sh showing to people because, as I've often said, and I'm, it's probably a little melodramatic to say it this way, but the next world war is going to be fought over fresh water. might not be a world war, but I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of conflicts fought over fresh water. As I've said before, you've got the dam in Ethiopia is building a dam on Lake Tana. Lake Tana is the source of the Nile River. Who's downstream? Egypt? Downstream. Downstream nations are going to be the ones that could be in a problem. The Ethiopia can say all day long, oh, we're not going to restrict the water. Yeah, right up until their people need the water. Bangladesh, which already has tons and tons of problems, all their water is dependent on China sending it to India and India sending it to Bangladesh. So they don't get the water except during the monsoons that you see where they get their butts flooded out and then drowned. They could benefit by building cisterns and people like Sam Perrin, S-A-M-P-A-R-A-N, the Sam Perrin Foundation, look it up online, well worth seeing the work they do. They're doing some really great work about <coughs> creating water cisterns in the developing nations. Um, 
you can't grow, you're, you're not going to be able to grow rice with those type of things, I don't believe, so you have to make a change in the monoculture of rice to something else that's less water, um, water intensive. But they can feed their population, the existing population, while they and the rest of the world works on knocking that population down. Um, they can feed the population with cisterns. A simple 3,000 gallon water tank like this in a farm in Bangladesh would help them. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself on that. The thing is, water is going to become very important for them and for us here in America. We're going to be, we're going to need to depend on the water, the water that falls from the sky. Because water is going to get more expensive, more and more expensive. It's already chlorinated. You're putting chlorinated water on your shrubbery and if you have grass on your grass, which is not doing, it's not really helpful for them, but rainwater is. Harvest that rainwater that comes off your roof, do your ornamentals, your gardens with it. That's what I'm doing here, and I've got some 4,000 gallons of water impounded in this area here in the middle of the desert. That's why this is so important to me, to have an extra 10,000 gallons here. That means I don't have to be dependent on my holes in Terlingua Creek, because last year they dried up. I don't want to go through another year where they dry up, where I actually will have to be bringing well water once a week up from my friends in Terlingua. That's if their wells don't go dry, because our water here is finite water. So this is why it's very important. That's one project that's super important, is this cistern, I want you to see how I build it so you can do it yourself, or you can buy one. If you got money, not credit, money, to buy one, go right ahead. I just don't, I mean, I'm living on starvation money here, so I can't. I have to get creative. I really have to get creative, but I'd be creative anyway. Well, I'll tell you, sometimes getting old is a pain in the neck. My brain completely forgot my second very exciting project. I finally remembered it, but I did leave something off here. So talking about the, the footing, as I'm pouring the footing with the rebar in here, the footing itself, the bottom doesn't have to be level, nor does the top. It can crown up and drop down a little bit. There can be dips in it. Because we are using the small bottles to um, as our building material. And they aren't our building material. They're more placeholders. The matrix itself is very clear that the matrix itself is the mortar. The mortar's got to be strong, so my mix of mortar is actually more of a concrete than it is a mortar. This has to be strong, and the bottles are simply placeholders. It lets me use about a quarter of the uh, mortar that, or concrete that I would use if it were a poured concrete wall. So it doesn't have to be perfectly level. It definitely doesn't have to be square because we're not putting really block in there that's 8 by 16, 8 by 16, 8 by 16. It can do this. It can wiggle. It can look like hell. It can look like something that nobody in construction would touch. But it will hold the weight of these bottles. It will hold the stresses of the, uh, of the water. And it's something that I can do easily here without a lot of extra work and string lines and all of that stuff. People love to do that for some reason. My father-in-law loved it. I've, I've had people here that just love to set those string lines and boards. And, and they don't want to use used boards. They want to use brand new boards. Now, a trench like this works fine in this type of construction. Bear in mind, it won't pass any inspection or any building codes anywhere, but it doesn't matter because we don't have those here. And if I build something that falls on my head, it's not shame on the county for not having building codes, it's shame on me for doing shoddy work. That's easy enough. Okay, the second exciting project that I forgot completely about is the gravity battery project. Now don't hold your breath on that one, it's going to be several months. We are building a gravity battery and it's going to be an interactive set an interactive build because I'm going to have to ask you folks for help in locating materials, sending them to me, uh, which I'll pay for the shipping, but I just have no access to the materials I need. And you'll find out more when I do the first um, the first video about the gravity battery. But the gravity battery, once I start that, it's going to be one of those things that a lot of people, especially if you have a little bit of property, like an acre or more, it's one of those things that you people can do there. And when I show you, you're going to go, ah, that was easy. At least 
that's what I hope. I hope that we are able to, in, to um, infect a whole lot of people with the 3R bug. Reuse, repurpose, recycle. Because we need to respect the earth. And until I come back in a few minutes, and I'll come back and finish this up after I pour it and set the rebar uh, on the whole thing so you guys can see. It'll be another minute, minute and a half of the video, so uh, hang on for that. It'll be a couple of days before I get it, but for you, a couple seconds because I don't have a good editing program. I haven't got time for those. i got to build. Be right back. Well, folks, it's been a few days, and Cascade thinks it's a new video because it's been a few days, right? Come on, your people are out there. Anyhow, um, the heat finally broke, a cold front came through, we've got a, a, a beautiful cloudy fall day here today, uh, but I have finished part one of the, uh, of the cistern and I want to get behind the camera and show you. And here we are, I'll walk along it as I talk. The footing is poured, the pipes you see in there are just for a little bit more lateral support, you know we're going to have a lot of weight pushing out when the water gets in here and I've, I've got a way of fixing that by attaching some other supports to the uh, to the roof as well but uh, I just had that metal sitting there now it may not do anything but it darn sure isn't gonna hurt so I put it there to get rid of it you'll see footing isn't pretty it isn't perfect there's not a butt crack in America that would approve it and there's a whole bunch of people that won't sign my name to it however it'll hold the cistern and over 10,000 gallons of water so you don't it's always a good idea to do things as good as you can but there's also times when you have to realize you have limited uh, limited energy or time and something else like this footing will work perfectly well particularly if you're going to be doing bottles and that's what the cistern is going to be built out of now this ends phase one or part one of the cistern build and it's going to be a while before we do a part two because what I'm showing you here where you can see the bottlenecks I have to actually finish this wall all the way up come around here and hide that tank and finish this wall all the way whoop, pipes in the way but all the way up there before I can start out here with these walls so it'll be a while for phase two or part two uh, but part two will be coming as soon as I can right now I've got a couple other projects to do that'll be in the vlog um, uh, should be dated today or tomorrow so anyway until then it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas saying hey see you later <laughs>